Hey, what's going on, guys? So today I got the Team Corrali Kagama in front of me. This is a customer's truck. He's got some issues going on, so we're going to see if we can get it all fixed up for him. So he's got a shock that's leaking. Uh, most likely, this is from dirt and some other stuff getting down on the piston, maybe, and going up in there, opening up that O-ring and possibly just leaking it out. Um, could also be his cap. I can't tell. It looks, He said he put some cleaner stuff on here, so... I don't know if that is from that or not, but we'll we'll take that apart, investigate it, see if we can avoid having to do a rebuild on it, if it's just something simple. Uh, he's also got his steering linkage that was broke, so we're going to upgrade this with uh, some GPM aluminum and do the whole servo post. <clears throat> he's also got a diff clacking, so sounds like almost like a diff skip. He brought me a video in and showed what he was talking about, and that's exactly what it sounds like. Um, I don't know if it's in the front or, or center. Uh, it could even be in the rear. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to eventually take his discs out and look at them. So I guess with the front, I mean, there's just a lot to take off of this truck. So, I mean, obviously, I want to make a video and, and show the access to the steering linkage because there's just so much here to get off. And the quickest, easiest way is kind of what we like to do. But, you know, I got to take it apart first and find out which way that is uh, but since I do have to access the front diffs anyway on this I will be dropping the the bumper moving the LED lights um, you know probably taking off the front half of this now I, I might take off more than I need to because I know that eventually I might end up getting this center diff out of here as well so you know I'll probably take off as much as I can from here forward so if I find the diff issue and either one of these two diffs we won't be touching the rear if I have to open up the rear as well I'm going to be dropping the wheelie bar I put on here um, out and we'll have to get access into the rear diff as well which isn't too hard but um, these two are the more important ones because a lot of this has got to come off anyway for that servo post so let me go ahead and get ripping this apart um, I'm going to go ahead and dress the shock at the shock off first um, and then we'll start seeing what it takes to get access to this top plate here all right so i got the shock off and i don't know my dog or his dog the cap for the top if you look at this it's loose completely loose so a lot of times with machined aluminum and you know aluminum caps sometimes these things back off. So what you can do is you can take some Teflon tape like you would use on piping and water stuff and wrap some in there. We can also put, uh, once you clean up the oil and get the lips and the threads really clean, you can uh, come in there with some thread lock as well and just put like maybe a drop on each side, uh, you know, 180 degrees away from each other um, of thread lock and then put the cap back on and let that get on there. And that, you know, just make sure that that doesn't uh, back off like that during running but that's looks like all his issue and again you can usually tell where it's coming from because his body was wet so it was wet all the way down so usually if it's just wet from the bottom it could be the o-ring thing but it looks like his just came off the top and was pumping fluid out the top so this should be an easy fix we'll go ahead and get this one cleaned up get it refilled and then we'll put this aside and wait to go back on after we get everything else done all right, so I got the shock all cleaned up, refilled up, and I put the thread lock on the top cap, so we're going to let that sit. Cleaned all the parts off pretty much, just to make sure there's no oil. So if it starts to leak again, I'll notice, plus it'll make a puddle where it's at, but I'm 100% confident that that shock is going to be fine to go back on the truck. Just go ahead and get the rest of this oil cleaned up here, so once we do get it back on, um, I'll have some time to tell if it's coming back out, which again, I don't think it will. Pretty sure that took care of everything. I took the box off just to get the wires off for his LED lights, so most people won't have to worry about that. But what I'm going to try right now, again, just looking at this, I'm going to get the two hinge pin arms off. I know at least on the Cratons, just by looking at this, this piece is all on the top. That's got to come off anyway. So even if I do get this off, these are the next thing that's going to come. So we're going to drop the upper arms out of the way real quick. I'm going to get uh, these screws off. I'm going to get this brace top piece off here which I believe connects right here and then those two and 
Well, for now, I'm just going to lift this up and see if I can lift it up and get it out of the way for now because this does hinge. But like I said, we may have to get to that center diff anyway, but not for this particular steering column job. All right, so I got both of the upper arms off out of the way. Took out both of the pins holding the arms, um, the upper screw so far. But both of his pins are slightly bent uh, for the upper arms. One more than the other. That one didn't really look it. I think it was the angle, but you can kind of see it there. Now, that was the one. The worst one was on this side where he had broken an arm already. You can see the Kronos arm on here versus the Kagama. So I didn't have the Kagama arm in stock at the time, and I went ahead and gave him one of these just to get him back up and running. But you know, it's holding up, it's no big deal, but the damage he took earlier was on this side, and it apparently it had bent that pin a little bit. So we're just gonna straighten that back out for now. I'm not gonna you know, replace those just yet because they were still in, they were still functional. I'm just gonna straighten them back out before we put them back in later on. All right, with five screws off, which are the four on the top, and the one right there, this top piece now comes off. And that does get up out of our way. So I may zip tie it or something up there just for now. But all right, let's see what else it takes to get this stuff off. So on second thought, I'm just taking this screw right here out on the side and I'm just gonna Take that completely out, get it out of the way. It's one screw, it's accessible. No need to go get zip ties. All right, so next up, looking at this, it looks like there's four screws. One in this one, one on the other side, and then assuming just by the alignment that these two are going in there too. So I'm gonna drop all four of these screws right here in the front. All right, now that those are out, you've got the there's a screw on both sides right here, one there, one there, and then we've got the other two here, and then since this is all connected, I'll probably go underneath and get this screw off here just to take that whole top off. Alright, so that brace is being held on by these two. All right, so now back on the top. Looks like, there it is, there's our access. So that wasn't too bad, actually. I mean, it looks like a lot more, but yeah, that's not too bad at all. What I'm going to do now is just get this, the whole steering rack off. I'm going to disconnect it, and then we're just going to set it off to the side. And then I'm going to go and start looking at his diff and things. So I'll show the diff access as well in the front. And then we'll also, he's got a brake on his wheelie bar. I'm going to show you guys how I would fix that versus replacing it. So we'll see if uh, that helps anybody out as well. And I do know these are a pain in the ass right here. So I think I'll just go over you with it real quick. So unless they put a nut on these now. I don't think they did so what you got to do is kind of get some needle nose or something down here and hold the back end of this um, insert while you get this screw out so just make sure if you're trying to unscrew that you know it's not a nut it's just like the the back end of the connection there's a better shot of that like I said it's not a nut so what I'll do not much the grip there, so it's kind of smooth. So these at least lock on and allow you to get that screw out. All right, so the steering rack is out now and again. Just going to set this off to the side. I will rebuild this and add that in place once it comes in. All right, so I got the steering rack off. This is what we're going to rebuild which looks pretty simple. It looks like we're just going to put nuts, uh, nut wrench on the back of these, take these two screws off, take the top plate off, put the new pieces on, uh, and then clamp that back down on there. And then we'll be all aluminum. So this one, actually, I thought this was the piece that broke, uh, but 
apparently it was the bottom part of that, which is, I don't know, more rare to me. I thought that that would be the thing to go, but either way it wasn't. So. All right, so with the diff access, since I've already got the two screws out of here, which would be here regardless if you have the bumper or not, uh, but don't think you would have to take them off uh, if, if not, but this kind of goes over top of it and fits into that spot. So, but I do know that the bottom part comes off. We've got to drop, we don't have to necessarily take it off, but we've at least got to drop four of the five screws on the bottom so that we can kick that out of the way. You don't necessarily have to get that one because it's, it's typically a little pain in the ass to get to, but since it's actually all opened up right now, uh, the screw for that is somewhere. What is the screw for that one nowadays? What? What is that screwed into? I'm going to take that fifth screw out now just because I know on the Kronos and stuff there was a nut, a little nut and a screw here that that thing would come up. You had to get on top of it to hold it, which was very hard to do with all this stuff in, but I don't see it. So now I want to take it out just to look. I don't even see a hole for it. I guess that was it right there, that little hole underneath the drive cup there. Because I just took that out. There was no nut. And it came out like it was threaded. So apparently they put a threaded piece into the chassis now. I, I guess. I mean, it was a pain in the ass to get that off. So, I mean, I'm glad that they at least did something. Because I would always just ignore it and kind of tuck it down. But now at least we can get this skid completely off and out of the way. And it won't be kind of hindering us in any way. All right. So... Again, with a bumper, this has got to come off and get out of the way. Tuck these back in for a minute, uh, just so I don't lose them. Because this is going to be a part for a day without me working on it all the way. But our access now to this diff is these two screws, one on each side. With the addition of the top two screws, you take off the two here holding on the diff hinge pin. And when you take this off, let's see, there it is. All right, so that's just kind of holding it from behind. So there we go. So it didn't have to go very far. Missing a tooth right there. So it could have been from a bad cartwheel, could have been... Being on the throttle during a bad cartwheel could have been a couple things, but that's a pretty tough diff, man, and don't see that often. At least I I don't. I mean, I, I've got a lot of customers that have these trucks, and I don't see the tore up diff too often. But you know, it happens. I just did it to my uh, kaiju the other day, doing a backflip in the snow, landed with the throttle open, and tore my diff up, but. There it is. All right, well, at least I won't have to go any further. It's just a front diff access for him, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll get this diff repaired while I'm waiting for that uh, GPM part. And once that comes in, we'll get that installed and we'll get it all back together. So this, no big deal here. I'm just going to go rebuild this with a new bevel. All right, so anytime you've got damage like that done to the bevel, you've got to check the diff pinion as well. So just kind of inspecting to make sure I don't see anything on the teeth here. Yeah, I mean, it all looks good there. So looks like we locked out on this one. It's just on the bevel. All right, so I mentioned the rear on this. So this uh, gentleman put the wheelie bar on his. He wanted it from the Jambo, so we went ahead and put it on it. But looks like he broke right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some JB Weld up on here, close this all back up, and then take advantage of this nice thick groove right here. I'm going to fill in his grooves 
uh, with some JB Weld here, especially up here, and I'll come back over after it hardens and go around it. And that should keep this from breaking again, at least at this spot, obviously. And like I told him, if we filled in these grooves, they make these things so thin here. I don't know why they're grooved on both sides like this. It's such a weak spot. But if we pack this with some JB Weld and basically fill that, it would make this a lot stronger. So I might do that for them if I've got enough JB Weld just to fill both inside and outside. If not, I'm just going to dress it around here. But I should have some JB Weld. All right, so I went ahead and, like I said, filled it. <clears throat> I'm going to go touch up a couple spots here. Ran out of JB Weld, but I'm going to try to smooth that out a little bit more. But that whole piece right now has a nice layer over it in between it. And then, like I said, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. But that's kind of where we're at right now. Just filled in both sides. Should make that thing last a little longer. All right, guys. We got the bling installed. So we went uh, with the chrome on this, so looks really good. Um, again, not a huge fan of GPM as far as their aluminum on certain parts and things, but can't really go wrong with these uh, as a saver post. But um, yeah, I mean this is this is really nice, and they definitely are one of the few that make it. Uh, I actually didn't find any other ones, but. Um, these guys for the service saver horns and this is for a skeeter so it does fit you know the corona 6s trucks as well but we're going to get this back on uh, i've got the diff rebuilt and we got the new bevel on uh get some grease on there we'll be all set we got 100k in the front diff and we're ready to start reassembling all right so we've got the new uh, steering servo rack set up back in we've got the shock back on uh, we've got the wheelie bar mount fixed for this guy and this thing is all set man ready to go back out and get beat up all right so in addition to all the work I just did for the truck customer had a custom body he wanted me to put on this with an all black wing so that's what we just did I had to trim it a little bit this is a Creighton body so I had to trim it just a little bit to fit. Not much there, just had to open those holes up a little bit on the inside. And then trim around here for his bumper where the Kagama goes, just kind of here and up. But I think it came out good. Body's hot, by the way. But yeah, he's all set, man. Everything's fixed, looking good. Should be a happy customer. Thanks for watching, guys.